Uh, for me, uh, it all started when I was three years old. I thought all I wanted to do was play professional baseball. I wanted to be a big leaguer. I wanted to pitch in front of everyone I could. That's, that's all life really was for me. I was a good high school player, but I wasn't great by any means. I didn't have any chance to be drafted or anything like that. But I did have a chance to extend my playing career uh, and come to Cal Poly. So I, uh, I came to a showcase camp out here, and uh, I was lucky enough to be recruited here. And uh, I had a lot of success. Uh, I remember my end of the year meeting with my coach. They sit me down and they go, Matt, you had a great year, you know, really good job for us, but uh, we think you can get better. Um, if you can lose about 25, 30 pounds, change your mechanics a little bit, we think you have a really good shot of, of being a starting pitcher for us next year. I said, eh, yeah, no problem, man, I can do that. Uh, I'll do whatever it takes. So uh, for me, that entire summer, I thought the entire time I understood what hard work was through high school, but I mean, you know, when you're 16, 17 years old, do you really know what hard work is? <laughs> no, you don't. Um, but I went there and I had the goal in mind. Um, and so I ran stadiums every single day, Walla Walla, Washington, up and down the stadium at our place until I lost the weight. And overnight, I became a draft prospect, right? I was just a kid who wanted to play the game for a little bit longer. And that one experience for me, that one summer working hard, all of a sudden I had, I had agents calling me every, every day. So I got the opportunity to play for Team USA over the course of the next summer, uh, a memory that I'll never forget. Uh, I got to represent my country on the big stage. Um, it was fantastic for me. But uh, because that confidence wasn't authentic and because it kept building from other people telling me how great it was and the success I was having, it turned into a little bit of hubris, right? I was overconfident. Then all of a sudden, playing in the big leagues wasn't a dream. It was, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it easily. So uh, my family comes down for the draft. We have this whole big draft party out here. And uh, he calls me, pick 45s on the board. He goes, Matt, Phillies are going to take you 47th overall, major league draft. They're going to sign for $1.2 million. You ready for that? You want to do that? I said, hell yeah, I want to do that. Are you kidding me? It's all I've ever wanted to do, right? Um, so, get the call, name flashes upon the screen, and everyone just jumps up, man. It was, it was, it was awesome. It was honestly something I wouldn't change for the entire world. Um, I, I turned 21 in October, right? I had all this money burning a hole in my pocket. I turned 21. All my friends are 21. All of a sudden, it was like, I knew I was good enough, right? I had all this overconfidence, you know? And so I was like, working out six, seven times a week, that doesn't sound very much fun. Like, you know, I want to drink a couple more times a week, right? I want to go do this. And uh, two weeks into spring training, very first spring training, tear the bicep tendon in my left shoulder instantly, out for three months, just like that, right? Because I didn't work hard enough. I rehab, I come back, I start pitching, and I start struggling, right? And then the confidence kind of drops a little bit because it wasn't authentic. Then all of a sudden, those people who are saying, Matt, you're so great, that everyone's saying, oh, that kid's a bust. Right? The second round pick for that? That kid can't even get out of the second inning. What's he doing on the mound? They sit me up on the table and, and I can't catch my breath. I'm shocked. I'm dry heaving. And uh, I kind of calm down a little bit, take a couple deep breaths, and flipped over at my trainer. It's like, Mickey, did that get me in the eye? Am I, am I going to lose my eye? And he's like, no, man, no way, no shot. But I could tell he was lying. And, and I needed him to lie for me. Um, but, but I knew that, that it wasn't true what he was saying. Doctor comes up to me. Um, she says, Matt, this is, a, this is a serious injury. Injuries like this, 99.9% .9 of the time, you will not regain vision in your right eye. And if that is the case, we're going to need to remove that eye and have a prosthetic eye put in because that's the safest way. And up to this point, I haven't really processed everything that happened to me. It, it taken me a while. But uh, I get the phone. I call my mom. I start explaining to her what happened to me um, and what the doctor said. get about halfway through the phone conversation, and I, I just lost it. Uh, I started crying, and, I, and honestly, I don't know how long I cried for. She was crying with me, and it was probably, probably the lowest point in my entire life. I think everything had finally caught up to me. I understood what losing an eye meant to a professional sports career, but you know, it was a decision that I had to make in that moment, and so I told the doctor, hey, go ahead with both surgeries, and we'll figure it out. And uh, for me, I remember sitting in this hospital bed after the surgeries, and, and you couldn't get a word out of me. I thought everything that I had worked for my entire life was lost. I thought that the kid that grabbed those bands in the training room, I thought he was dead. But I had this doctor come in, the same one who performed my first surgery. She comes in, she sits down right next to me, and she goes, Matt, you've suffered a life-altering injury, but you have not suffered a life-ending. The only thing that I wouldn't be able to do, she said, was watch 3D movies, which I guess you need two eyes for. I don't really know. And from that moment, I was like, okay, okay, I think I can do this, but I knew the first step for me was going to be me to change the way how I thought about the world. I had to accept what happened to me. So once I realized that, I was like, okay, what can I change? Well, I can change how I think about it, right? I can change my, I can change my mindset moving forward. And so every morning I made the decision, I'm going to wake up with a clear mind and a positive attitude. And I don't know how long that's going to last, but that's how I'm going to wake up every morning.
I've set myself up for success because of the way I chose to approach my problems. We all struggle, we all fail, we all fall down, we all think there's things we can't overcome in life. That's just nature of being human. But if we can let, not let those problems and that past define us, but instead use them to help us define who we want to be, you'll set yourself up for the ultimate success in life. And I think if you can approach each situation independently while using the knowledge you gained from overcoming those previous problems, then there's nothing in this world that you can't do. And I hope you guys all enjoyed that. That was my story. Thank you.